Okay, Mark Jacobson, you are an engineer at Stanford University. Yes. And you've been studying the uh, potential for converting the global energy system to renewable energy entirely. Yes, we've been studying, uh, trying to determine whether we can convert the entire world's energy infrastructure for all purposes to uh, completely renewable energy infrastructure based on wind, water, and sunlight. Okay, and, 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 and you've come up with a, a, basically a, a master plan. Yes, it's a master plan to convert the world's energy infrastructure uh, using just wind turbines, uh, concentrated solar power, solar photovoltaics, geothermal power plants, hydroelectric power plants, and some tidal and wave power. Okay, well the question a lot of people ask is, what do you do when the sun is not shining and the wind is not blowing? Well, we've looked at that issue. It turns out when you just look at wind alone or solar power alone, sure, you're going to get this kind of randomness and variability that makes it difficult to match power demand. But it turns out that when you combine wind and solar together and use geothermal as some base load and hydroelectric power to fill in gaps of the wind and the solar, you can actually match power demand quite reliably hour by hour, day by day, week by week. Uh, just because by combining these renewables as a bundle, uh, they're very complementary to each other. When the wind is not blowing, the sun is usually shining. When the sun is uh, not shining, the wind is usually blowing. And in the cases when you don't have either wind or sunlight, then that's where the hydroelectric kicks in and where you can also fill in some of the, the base load with geothermal. And uh, what, if, what if everybody wants to convert to electric cars? How do we handle that problem? Well, that would be great to convert to electric cars. That's part of the plan as well, because we're looking for a plan for all purposes, and electric vehicles would replace uh, fossil fuel combustion vehicles, and they're much more efficient. They're four to five times more efficient than fossil fuel vehicles, uh, because they just electricity is so is so efficient. And it, when you have electric vehicles, you'll have charging mostly at night, and so. At night, that's when the wind is usually blowing the fastest over land. So we can increase the amount of wind power on the system, and that will help to satisfy the electric power demand at night and also make it easier to fill in the gaps during the day because wind would also supply some of the additional electricity during the day. Okay, one other issue is people have brought up the, the need for certain rare earth metals in, in some of these uh, systems. Have you looked at that? Yes, we've looked at a few different rare earth uh, metals, including neodymium, which is used in permanent magnets and wind turbine generators, and also lithium. And we would need to power the entire world for all purposes. Well, if we use 50, if we power half the world for all purposes with wind, we would need about 4 million 5 megawatt wind turbines. And that would re those would require about 4 teragrams worldwide of neodymium. And the resource available worldwide, or the known resource available, is about 28 teragrams. So we would require about one-seventh of the world's resource of that uh, element. Now, in terms of lithium, there's enough lithium in known resources uh, to provide power for over 3 billion vehicles worldwide. Today, there are about 800 million vehicles. So there should be enough lithium to power world, the world's battery electric vehicles. Okay, and uh, a lot of people have talked recently about the uh, uh, drop in solar, uh, the power, the cost of solar power, almost in terms of a Moore's Law kind of effect going on. Is that something you're seeing? Is that real? Yes, we've been seeing a tremendous drop in the and the cost of solar panels, the installed cost, and that's actually the reason that Solyndra went under, is because the conventional silicon-based solar cell prices have dropped so significantly that their technology, which was not, which was a different type of technology, was no, which they were banking on would be lower price, is now a higher price than traditional solar cell prices. So that's why Solyndra went under, and the. Cost is now at the utility scale between two and two two dollars and two fifty a watt for installed solar. At the at the uh, residential scale, it's still about five fifty to six fifty a watt. Um, but the price has gone down significantly in just the last two years, and the trend is still going. There's still lower prices in the future. Okay, one last question. Um, so for a utility. Uh, or, or, or anybody that's thinking of building a large thermal power plant, coal or nuclear, whatever, uh, sometime going forward, 
two years, five years, ten years, they're going they're going to find that a plant like that is going to be essentially obsolete in terms of the cost for for a buyer to to purchase power from that facility. Well, we we hope to replace all conventional plants with clean renewable energy plants. So that going forward, you know, as we uh, as we go forward, all new generation is wind, water, sun from an electric power point of view, and that every time a coal plant retires or a gas plant retires or a nuclear plant retires, we, we would replace it with a clean renewable energy plant. And so that by 2050, there will be no more conventional fossil fuel combustion plants. Uh, awesome, awesome. Uh, I've been reading your work for several years, and I thank you for it. I, you're you're really putting some some great numbers, uh, firm numbers underneath uh, uh, this vision, and uh, it's well appreciated. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, That's very nice. great. Awesome, thank you, sir. Okay.